Today we are going to focus on digraphs. Now, not diagraphs, that's where I hear a lot of people say, but digraphs. And this is a Greek word, and how I know that this is a Greek word is the pH. Anything with a pH tells you that this is a Greek word. So another way that I know that this is a Greek word is the di. Di means two, and it's a Greek combining form, and graph means to write or record. So when we put those two together, we are writing and recording two letters and writing it down. So this helps you understand the, your language. So there's lots of uh, Greek words in our languages, in science, in medi the medical field. So it's really important for you to understand your Greek combining forms. So your Greek combining forms, you should not just know how to spell them, but you should also understand the meaning because that's, that's when people make inventions, they use Greek combining forms to make up the name, like a telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, he made up the telephone name. So, which means tele from a distance and phone means to hear. So, maybe if you are a scientist or something or you've invented something, you can use your own Greek combined forms and make up your own name for an invention. So, we have two letters that make a specific sound and we're going to focus on these. Now, all of these are, we don't, I didn't put up every single digraph that we have in our language, but I put up the main ones. And then I'm focusing on your, these digraphs, T-I, S-I, and C-I. Now, these digraphs, I do not feel are, they get enough attention. And these are found in the middle of words. And it's really important that you study these because there are times when it says shh, and then there's other times when it's not even a digraph. So there's certain ways that, to help you understand when these turn into digraphs. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the first one, which is a WH, and it's a really, really old English word. And it's, so, when you, when you see these, you know that they come from years and years and years ago. So we have where, when, wine, whip, whisper, whiz, why, who. So look at that. That said a different sound because the WH says the W sound. Okay? But look, it's saying the H sound in this word which I think is interesting. So there's probably some other words that it will do that, but I actually don't know any yet. What, way, wheat, whale. So now, the and these also, they just come at the beginning of words. You, you don't find these at the end of words. So the SH though, on the other hand, this goes at the beginning and at the end of words, and once in a while, you'll find them in the middle of a word. So refreshment. Now this looks like it's in the middle of a word, but it's not because this is a suffix. Fresh is your base word, and so it's actually coming at the end of that word. Like white fish, that's the coming at the end. This is a compound word. Shipment, the beginning. Flash, shortly. Washing, this also looks like it's going in the middle, but it's not because you have a suffix right here. But look at this word, cushion. Now this is an unusual word, and we have the SH in the middle, but this is how you typically spell shun. T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, or C-I-O-N, or C-I-A-N. That's typically how you would spell shun, and so this is unusual a few times in our language. We have dish, shanty, Shea, like shea butter, where you could put in your makeup or your, your, I've made my own lotions with shea butter. So now look, pH, we talked about that. 
it is Greek. So if you see this, it identifies something as Greek and then you can look at other things and in, in the language and say, and I'll teach you that in, a, in another uh, part of the lesson where you can read different Greek words. Now, nephew, telephoto, see, telephoto. These are both Greek confining forms that have different meanings. Phosphide, asphalt, uh, peros. This also could say peros. It says both sounds. Digraph, what we have right here. Sphere, like a big, like a globe or the earth. Phone means to hear or sound. Alpha, uh, that means the beginning or the, the strongest. And so when I think of alpha, I think of God and phony. So we have TH. It says two different sounds, th and th. So we have southbound. Also, this right here, you can have this at the beginning, middle, and end. Most of the time, also with asphalt, you'll see that um, on the beginning, middle, and the end words also. But then we have theater, 30, throne, methane, see right here, th rather, it switched to the th, father, brother, the, thrill, filthy, see that's at the end because that is a base word, thorny, smith, see how those fall in all different parts of the word. So now we're gonna talk about the WR. Now this is an, an old English word also, where we have the WH, the same thing. So it comes kind of from a German descent. And we have the rap, wreck. And so let's, let's take rap and we, now these follow the spelling rules. Consonant, vowel, consonant. Let's double it and add on our vowel suffix, okay? Now, see, look, we have wrist. We're gonna just add on our suffix to wrist, wristy. You're gonna add on your vowel suffix. It's not a consonant, vowel, consonant. So look at this, right. We're going to add on our vowel suffix to make it say writing. So we drop that E and add on our vowel suffix, okay? Now wrote is the, your irregular past tense of write. So you wouldn't write, say roted or roting. You, so you would just have wrote. Uh, now this is wrong. And also, I think this is really interesting to understand where this comes from. So before the 17th century, the W was pronounced. And the WR, it store or twist out of shape. So when you see a word that has a WR, it's twisting or being distorted. So like think of, of wrapping a gift. You're wrapping the paper, you're twisting it, you're distorting it around your box. So I think this will really help you understand words if you understand the meaning of the WR. Your wrist, it moves, it twists, right? Uh, you, you write, so when you're, you're twisting and moving, you know, your different letters around. Same with wrote, wrong, you've done something wrong, your idea was twisted or distorted. So I think that's really interesting and I think that's important for you to understand when you see a WR, it helps you understand it. So now we have other Greek combining forms that came out of this, um, this the 17th century and before. So we have uh, the KN, which we still use, the GN. Now, now this is what's interesting. We had HN, HL, HR, and HW, and the H in these were all dropped. And so, like we have, this would have been halof, and they used to say these sounds. So, um, so we used to say, so we also have haruf, so those were dropped,
but so we had some words that was kani these these made their own sound also it's really interesting that this h didn't get dropped so in, it's an old English word, but it just identifies it. Now, they have talked about dropping some of these letters, but when you drop, now, if we drop some of these letters, some of these, some of these words, they, they have different meanings. And so they're not going to drop any of these letters because they take on different meaning. See how that wrap and wrap they are different meanings. If you take off the W, you'll have a different meaning. So they not on every word, but on lots of words, you'll have a homophone. So now we're gonna talk about the CK. Now, okay, so we have, it makes the K sound, but we're going to talk about how do you spell, when do you spell it with a CK or with a C or a K? And so there's rules for that, okay? So now, the time when you spell it with a CK is after a short vowel. You can only spell a CK after a short vowel. So rock, that is a short vowel. So now if you want to add on a vowel suffix, we don't have to worry about the doubling rule because the doubling rule, this is still two letters, okay? So we have a VCC but you have to have a consonant vowel consonant. So you won't have to ever worry about a doubling rule. You just add them on. And let's add on able. Able to rock, okay? Lock, lockable. So this is short. So you put a CK. Now, Cs are not allowed to be at the end of our language unless it's a multi-syllable word and it has to end with ick. It can't end with ack or uck, or awk, it can't do that, okay? So, if you have a multi-syllable word that is using a different vowel besides the I, and it's short, you have to use a CK. But if it's long, or if it's a consonant, then you would use a K, okay? So that's how that works with uh, multi-syllable words and, um, and one syllable words. You can't have a C at the end, all right? Unless it's in a multi-syllable word and it says ick, okay? So now look at this, rack. This is short, so that's why it's spelt with a CK. So we're gonna add on our vowel su suffix, rackable. Stock, see it's spelt with a CK because this is a short vowel. So we have stockable. We just add it on, because this is a vowel consonant consonant. Now backfill. Now you would think, well, in the middle of words, it could be kind of tricky to figure out is it going to be a C, a CK, or a K. But in this word, because it's a because it's a compound word, you would, it, it won't matter. This is its very own word. So backfill, it's short. And then, so you know it's just going to be a CK because you put a CK after a short vowel, okay? And you spell back how you would spell it if it's all by itself. Well, we're gonna add on our vowel suffix, okay? So hick, this is short, so we use our CK because it, this is short. So we have hickable, okay? Just add it on. Now we have ruck. We're spelling this with a CK because this is a short vowel, short vowel. So now we're just gonna add on our vowel suffix, okay? Now I made up a, some nonsense words on my next board also, and we're gonna talk about, okay, when is it going to be a C? When are we gonna put a C, a CK, or a K in the word? Okay, so let's write this nonsense word out again, and we're going to call this pay, whoops, we want to leave that blank. So you can make up your own nonsense words and then have your child put in the sound that you want here, but you have to follow the spelling rule. So 
Can this be a C? It can because this is not an E, I, or a Y. So you know it's going to be a C what we have here. So, and it's really important that you make sure that you know if this is long or short. And I made this to be long. So it says Pekun. So, but let's change this right here. And we're gonna make it an E. And I'm going to change this. I want it to say Pekun. So I want this to be a short vowel, okay? So can we use a C? No, we can't use a C here. So we skip, can we use a CK? We can because it's a short vowel. So that's, so it says packin, all right? But let's say I want this to be long and it's going to, I want it to say packin. Well, can we use a C here? No, because it would say pacen, see? because that E is making that switch to making it say S. So, can we use a CK? No, because this is a long vowel. CKs can only go after short vowels, so it would have to be spelled with a K. So this would say Pekin. So, but let's say, let's switch this to an I. Well, Let's see if it will fit with a C. No, because that is an E, I, or a Y. It would say Payson again. Can we put a CK in there? No, because that's a long vowel. So we know it has to be a K. All right, so let's look at this word. This says Blickster. So let's go Blickster. Okay, so we want should have just left that blank. So we want to see. This is going to be short, okay? So there's my short symbol, and we have, so can we use a C? Yes, we know that use, this is, a, it has to be a C because a C can go here because that is not an E, I, or a Y. The only time you wouldn't put a C here, and this follows most of the time. Obviously, there's some words that don't follow this rule, but let's take out the ST right here. And I'm going to make this long, okay? And I want it to bliker because this is long. All right, so now we have bliker. Well, can we use a C? No, because that would say blicer. So we know we can't use a C. Can we use a CK? No, because that is not a short vowel. I said I want it to be long, so it cannot happen. So look, Blyker has to be a K in this sense. Okay, so now let's put this as an AR, and I want it to say, uh, let's push this back to its short sound. Now. I want it to say blicker. Now this AR will be unaccented and it will say blicker. Well, can we use a C here? We can use a C and it will, it will break here because this will be short, but it will still, you still use a C because this is not an E, I, or a Y. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so this says shacken. Okay, so we are going, how do we know that we have to spell that with a CK? So let's write it down. Uh. Well, can we put a C there? No, it would say shasen because this E forces this to say S. So we know it can't be a C. We know that this is short, and so it has to be a CK because this is a short vowel, okay? Now let's change this to long, and we, I want it to say shaken. Oh, that's a real word. So, but, um, so can we use a C there? No, because that is an E, I, or a Y. Can we use a CK? No, because that's long. So we know that has to be 
a K. So let's try something else. Let's say we have an A there and I want it to say, and I want this to be short and I want it to say shakun, okay? So can a C go here? It can. It will split right here to keep this short, but it will still say, be a C because this cannot change this to a S sound, okay? But let's say we have an I, and let's keep this short and put a C in there. Well, can a C go there? No, it can't because it will ch make it say uh, Shasin. We don't want it to say Shasin, we want it to say Shakin, okay? So, can a CK go there? It can because that is a short vowel. Okay, uh, now let's see with this one, I'm going to make this long and can a C go here? No, it will say shasen and I want it to say shaken. Okay, so we can we go a CK? No, because that is a long vowel. So we have to be a K. All right, so that's how that works. So now let's look at uh, Bach pit. Now, this is a this is a nonsense word that is a compound word. So we have, and this would be easier because C's don't, can't go at the end of words, right? And so you have to have so that C K. You would spell Bach. It's its very own word, so it would end with a C K. All right, because this is a short vowel. You can't put a K right after a short vowel like that. Okay? So now look at this. Mock it. So we know that this says mock it because this is a CK. So you know that this is short. When you're reading that, when you're reading that, it can't be mock it. If this is a nonsense word and you're reading this nonsense word, there's no way that this can be the long O sound if this CK went over here because it can't. The CK has to be with the vowel that it affects and it always follows a short vowel. So that's why CKs can't go at the beginning of words. Be only Cs and Ks can go at the beginning of words because CKs can only follow short vowels, okay? So now let's go, um, let's, I want it to say, how do we know that this has to be a CK? Well, if we put a C in there, it would say Mosset. So it's short, so we know it has to be a CK. Okay, so let's say I want this to be long though. It can't be a CK, because it would say Moket. So it has to be a K, and it would break like that, because that would be an open syllable. Okay, so now let's do mo, um, let's do at or ut. It'll, so now, can a C go there? Yes. So it stops it. That, so that would say mo cut. Okay, that's how you would do that. So let's say right here, this says block it. We know that this is a CK because this is, you know that you read this as short because this is a CK, all right? So, how do we know? Can we put a C in there? No, because that is an E, I, or a Y, okay? So it has to be a CK because that is short to make the K sound. So let's actually make this long. And can we put a C there? No, because it's an E, I, or a Y, right? And we, can it be a CK? No, because this is, we want it to say blow ket. Has to be a K because that is a long vowel, right? Um, let's do it long and a UT. We change that. So this says blow cut, blow cut. So let's try start with a C. 
It can go there, so you stop. You don't go any further. It can go there because that is not an E, I, or a Y, okay? Now look at this, it says Ron key. So we know it breaks right here and because you have two consonants. But let's write it out, Ron, and we want the k sound, all right? So can we put a C there? No, because it would say Ron C. Can we put a CK here? No, because that is not a short vowel. So it has to be a K. Okay, so now let's say we want it to be an A-Y, and we want it to say Ron K, all right? Well, start with your C. Can it, can it work? Yes, so it says Ron K like that, and it won't switch because this is not an E, I, or a Y. Okay, so now let's switch this. Let's just put it as a Y, and we want it to say Ronky this way. Well, let's say, can we put a C there? No, that would say Ron C. Well, so let's take it out. Has to be a K because a CK, this is not a short vowel. So you know, since this right off the bat, you, it has to be a K. Okay. Now let's, this says trail caption. Why are we spelling that with a K? Okay, so can we put a C there? No, it's a trailception. So it can't be that because we want it to say trail caption. So let's so go for a CK. Can we put a CK there? No, because that is not a short vowel. Can't happen. So it has to be a K. But let's, let's change this to an A. Well, can we put a C there now? Yeah, trail caption. That's what we want it to say, trail caption. So it has to be a C here. Okay, well let's take out that L and we want, and let's actually put the E back in here and we want this to say, uh, let's make this short and we want it to say uh, trekeption, trekeption, okay? So can we put a C there? No, because it would say treception, so you have to put a CK here because that is short, okay? Now, this is, this word says chain, but the CH sound says three different sounds. It says ch, k, and sh. So when it says ch, that means it's an English word. When it says, if it is Greek, it's saying k, and if it's French, it's saying sh. So you have to identify different things in your word. So if you have a PH, then you know if you have a CH with a PH, that then you know that the CH will say k, because it's Greek. So that's, that's something that we're gonna talk about. Now look at this, cancer. So this is spelt with a C because this is an A, it's not spelt with a K because this is not an E, I, or Y. But see, this one is spelt, we want it to say S. So this C is saying S because this is an E, I, or Y. So this is the reason why this K sound is a C. Now, but look at this, screen, it's saying K and it's not followed by an E, I, or a Y. Create, same thing here. It's not followed by an E, I, or a Y. So that's when you spell the K sound at the beginning of a word. So you spell, um, you can't spell a CK at the beginning of a word. Income, this is not an E, I, or a Y. But look, Pacific, this says ick. So if we want ick, at the end of a multi-syllable word, you spell it I-C. You don't spell it I-C-K. 
So let's say we want thick in a one syllable word. You spell it F-I-C-K. But if we have thick at the end of a multi-syllable word, you spell it F-I-C, okay? That's how you would say that. Now, economy, that's spelt with a C because that is not an E, I, or a Y. But look at all this. So this K is a digraph, okay? Uh, knowingness, this is your base word with two suffixes added on. It looks like a really big word, but it's really quite small. Now, kind, this is spelt with a K because this is an E, I, or a Y. K because it is an E, I, or a Y. Same thing here. Kid, kicker, king, kept. See how they're all followed by E, I's, or Y's, and that's when you use your K. Overlook. See now at the end of a word, see how at, you can't have a C at the end of a word, so it has to be either a C, I mean a K, or a CK, but since this isn't a short vowel, it has to be a K. Same here, this is not a short vowel, so it has to be a K. Book, this is not a short vowel, so it has to be a K. Workflow, thinker, this is not a short vowel, so it has to be a K. And that's a unit sound, should be memorized. But still, it's following the rule. Broken, so now this is when you figure out when do you do this in the middle of a word? Well, can a C go there? No, because that is an E, I, or a Y. But this is long, so you know it can't be a C, K, so it has to be a K. Same with shaken, right here. This, so you can't, this can't be a C, because it would say shasen. So, and it can't be a C, K, because this is long, so it has to be a K. So now look at this, flick and spark. See, after a short vowel, you do a CK, and after a consonant or a long vowel, you do a K at the end of a word. So now let's look at this right here. This is a digraph that says nap. It used to say knap, knee, knit. So it's saying nap, knee, knit, not, new, no. And so it's the, the N is the strong letter here. So let's say we want to take off these K's. Look what happens if we take them out. They make completely different words. They, they have the same sound, they're homophones. This, this is why they won't come off. There's been some debate on that, but it, it, they can't come off. They make different words. Okay, so I want to remind you with the C, the CK, and the K. If in the, you're trying to figure out in the middle of a word, C, try C first. If you want the K sound, try C first. If it's followed by an E, I, or a Y, you know you can't use it, then move to a CK. If you know that that's going to be a short vowel, if it makes it sound for a short vowel, then you use a CK. If not, use a K. So we're going to talk about the TCH. These come in to our, uh, the English language and they are only spelled after a short vowel, just exactly like a CK. So we have watch, short vowel, match, short vowel, catcher, short vowel. And you'll find them often at the end of words, but this is a base word right here with the suffix added on. Same with this one match board, but it's its very own word, it's short vowel. Hotch, hotchpotch, short, short vowels right there. Switch. Now, we don't wanna switch up our letters and we can't spell switch like this. That is wrong because this is a short vowel. It has to have a TCH in there, okay? Now look at this word, thatch. This is a short vowel, saying it's short sound, so it's spelled with a TCH. But such, this is spelled wrong. This is a nonsense word. This is how you would spell this. You don't do a TCH 
it has to be a short vowel. It can't be with with um, vowel teams. But now there's a guy on YouTube that calls himself Such and spells it this way. And that is okay. If your parent wants to uh, name you a certain name and not follow spelling rules, it's completely fine. It's completely correct. It might be harder to spell for other people, but it's totally fine. Now let's figure out this word. Now we have two vowels in the middle. I mean two vowels and we have a consonant in the middle. So we're going to push it to the end over here. And we're going to try to figure this word. Is this going to, which sound is this going to say? So let's start with the English language. Mo Narch, never heard of. Now let's move the M over, the N over to the O. Monarch, still haven't heard of it. Well, let's move it to the Greek. Monarch, monarch. We've heard of a monarch, like a monarch butterfly, monarch in government. This is all about government. So look at this one though. E-A-U is a vowel team that is French. And we talked about that in another lesson. So we don't even have to guess. We know that this is going to say shh. So let's find our constant, our vowels. One constant in the middle is going to go the, to the end. So it's going to say chateau. But that's incorrect. So let's move the T over. And it's going to say chateau. And that is the correct pronunciation for this French word. Now this word is a really weird word. It's, it's, you say choir, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this because a lot of you take choir at school, but it's really important to understand where the origin comes from because I'm sure a lot of you thought, why, why do they spell choir this way? It's because it doesn't come from our language. But this is a true, true sight word that if you don't know how to spell this, uh, and you don't learn how to spell this, you will spell this word wrong because you can't even break it apart and decode it. It's saying the qu sound to start off with. And then this doesn't even break into the correct sounds. Now look at this one. This right here, right off the bat, you could tell that this is a French word. Can you see that, Paul? Can you tell that this is a French word right here? because right here, this E, if there's, in the English language, there's always a reason for the E to be there. And there's not really a reason here. So the reason for that E to be there is to say, I'm French. And so right off the bat, you see, it can't jump over two words, two letters. So we know that this is a French word. And let's break it apart. We have the N here. And we're gonna, so we could say pay nosh because a lot of times that will say ah or ah. We know it's not in our language, so play with the word. But this says panache, okay? Oh, Daniel needs to move this up. So we can't identify anything right here for teacher if it's French or Greek. So we're gonna start with just our American word or our English language, teach, teacher, okay? So let's say we didn't know the word, teaker. That doesn't sound right, teacher. So just play with the word. But right here with this one, we know that this is an, in the English language because it has a T, you don't even have to guess. So you know that that's going to be short. So it says catcher, okay? Now in this word, you can't identify really anything unless you've really studied your Greek combining forms and your Greek words. This is a Greek word. And so it says chemistry, but you can't really identify it in here. So we could say chemistry or, or chemistry, whichever, until you can find the actual sound of that word. Look at this word. Now we don't have a T in here, so this could be, it's after a short vowel, so it's probably not an American word. Um, it's probably, so let's, let's try it finding it as a um, Greek word. 
So we're gonna put the N to the end because we have our two vowels and it's gonna say spinush. Well, we, did, we just did French, spinush. Well, how about spinush? Still nothing. How about spy natch? Knack, spy knack, but that's Greek. Well, how about spin knack? So that's not saying it either. So let's go back to our, this is not in our English language. It actually comes from the Persian, in the Persian area. It's in, uh, it, it could have e easily originated from China. This says spinach. It's saying ch, but look, that A is turning to I. It's not in our language. So, so you'll find words like this that's not following the spelling rule. But, but if you're understanding where it came from, you know that it didn't come from the American, uh, the English language. So we also have British English and we have American English. And so things differ in sounds. Now let's figure out this one. Let's try it. Uh, the CH is going to go to the end because they stay together. We don't break digraphs. And so we're gonna bring it to the end and this is gonna say bro -ker. Now that's, that is our Greek, then we, that doesn't make sense. How about brochure? Nope, brochure. So we know that this is a French word because this um, turn, this is French. Okay, but look here, we have a CK, it's following a short vowel. If you see a CK, you know that that's short. You don't even have to guess. Plus it's a close syllable, so we know that that's short. So let's go keck. How about shek? Check. So just play with it. That says sh check. Now, how about shimni? Shimni or kimni or chimney. So that's how you kind of play with that. CH, oh, you have a T in there. Can you see that, Dan? So you have the T right there. So we know that this is going to say ch catch in. Same thing here, watch er. You don't have to watch er. You don't have to worry about this. But look at these words down here. We're going to, if you have a word that has a PS, and this is another digraph, this is this says I'm Greek. If you all it tells you that it's Greek, it is a digraph. Wise often in, in the middle of a word beginning tells you that this is Greek. And so if you see that, uh, you will know that that CH is going to be the K sound. You don't even have to guess. So this says psychic, okay? Now look at this one, S-C-H, immediately you know that this is a Greek word. You don't even have to guess. So this will say school. Now I have monarch up here again, and I want you to, I have it up here because this is such an important word, I want you to know what it means. So monarch, this is, both of these are Greek combining forms, and they're important to know. Now look at this one. So you would know, if you studied your Greek combining forms, you would look at that and immediately know that that is a Greek, is Greek word. Now look at this. This E right here is right next to your CH. So look, we know that that is French. Mustache, so you don't have to guess. So let's, let's figure out, this could be Greek, it could be um, French, so let's go French. Teach, teach. Nope, teak. Now teach. Also, there's not really a way to hear, unless you're studying your Greek words, this says chemical, okay, chemical. Then, then you, you just play with the word. Okay, so now look at this one. This you can't tell with this one either. Identify anything. So we could say chorus or chorus or chorus. If you see anything that starts with a C-H-R, you know that this is a Greek word. You don't have to guess. You will not have anything 
um, CHR Greek. Okay, so I like this as Kristen. I love all the words, all the names that have Christ in them for like Jesus Christ. Now Christ is a Greek word that comes from the Greek origin. Oh, I put monarch back up here, monarch. Now, if you're studying your Greek combining forms, you'll know what that means. And I put it up here again because this is really important for you to understand. So I challenge you to look it up. I'm not gonna tell you what it means, but I want, challenge you to look it up and understand what the meanings are plus the spelling because guess what? Then you're gonna be able to understand other words. This says, if you know that this is Greek, you're going to know that this is Greek. And this says archive. Now we're going to go into the digraph TI and we're going to talk about when it's a digraph and when it's not a digraph. Now, if you see T I O N S I O N and C I O N or C I A N you know that those are digraphs. Now these two right here are unit sounds and they're typically, they are connected to Latin roots. Now your Latin root in this one right here is right there, but it's M-O-T-O, -O, okay? And you would put on your T-I-O-N, promotion. So when you're adding on a T-I-O-N and you can hear it and it's a long O and it says shun, you know it's a T-I-O-N because if you put an S-I-O-N, anything, if it's by a vowel, doesn't matter if it's long or short, it, it forces the S-I-O-N to say jun. So, but it would be long because you can't, you would have a double S for, for it to say shun. So promotion, that's how you would T-I-O-N. If it's gonna be a long vowel and you want it to be an S-I-O-N, it's gonna say jun, promotion, okay? Now, look at this word. This says criticism. Now you have a T-I in here, but this is how you would know if it's a digraph or not, most of the time, not always. That is a consonant. And so for it to be a digraph, this has to be a vowel. The next letter has to be a vowel. So since this is a consonant, you know that this TI is not a digraph. So this is criticism. It's saying it's short sound, okay? Now look at this one. This says a TI right here, but this is not a consonant. I mean, this is a consonant, not a vowel. So you know it's going to just say whatever I, this is, it's saying it's short sound here, identical. So, um, because it's following um, the rule, if it's in the middle, it says it's short sound. Okay, so, but this one right off the bat, if you see T-I-O-N, you know that this is a digraph, okay? And you've got, your Latin root in here. But look at this one. You have a TI right here, but this is a consonant, not a vowel. So you know right here, it is not a digraph. So it says practice. Same right here, TI, but it's followed by a consonant. So you know it's not a digraph. So it says par -ti -cool. See, C-L-E is its very own syllable. But look at this word. This T-I is followed by a vowel. So this is a digraph and it says partial. So this I right here is not part of, um, it's not a vowel in here. It's part of a digraph right there. Now look, T-I-O-N again, see how it's connected to your Latin root? That is your digraph. But look at this one, this T-I, continual. It's, this is a consonant, so you know that this is not a digraph. So it's going to say it's short sound, it's in the middle of a word. But look at this one, T-I-O-N, you know that this is a digraph. And so it's gonna say detention, 
this will be its very own sound. Tent is your, your Latin root in there. And then look at this word. T-I, look, you're followed by a consonant, so you know it's gonna say tack, tick. But let's talk about, see, when we talked about the tick, T-I-C-K, when it's all by itself. But it, if it's in a multi-syllable word, you would spell it T-I-C. That's how you spell ick in a multi-syllable word. This is how you spell ick if it's in a one-syllable word. So you have to be really careful with that. Uh, it doesn't work with any other, any other um, vowels but ick. C's are not allowed to be at the end of our language unless it ends in ick and it has to be in a multi-syllable word. Okay, so here we have some more at the end, the digraph for T-I. So this is cacti. If it's at the end, it's not a digraph because T-I's have to have a vowel following it. S-I's and C-I's, they have to have vowels following them to make them say shh. So this I thought was a really fun word. This is doti, and you remember how we talked about these digraphs that uh, make one sound and then they were dropped in the, uh, between the 15th and 17th century? Well, look at this one. Right here, didn't get dropped. So, um, so sometimes you might find words where it didn't get dropped. So this says sente or senti, and this says sente or, this is a Latin root, this I means individual pieces, so if you say a centimeter, it means, and cent means 100, and that means that meter is broken into 100 individual pieces, that's where you get the I right there. So look at this, the T-I, it's not followed by a consonant, so you know right off the bat that that is not a digraph, that says bedtime. So here, this is followed by a vowel, but this is also a suffix, and it's not, it's not a digraph there. That says haughty. They are not digraphs at the beginning of words, so this says title. But here we have it in the middle, but look, it's not followed by a vowel. Can you see all that really good, sweetie? It's not followed by a vowel, so this says autism. So you, that would be saying I. We have anti, it followed by a vowel, but this is also a suffix added on to ant. So that would not be one. Now, T-I-O-N, just, just remembering, T-I-O-N, that is your, if you see that, you know that's a digraph. And it's connected to your Latin root, that Latin root is sept. If you see C-T and P-T, you know immediately that it's a Latin root. So we have tippy right here, it's at the beginning and it's followed by consonant, so that is not a digraph. Now this one, it's same thing, it's at the beginning so it's not a digraph, but it could be confusing because you have a vowel following it. But that says tear. Um, so here we are, we have a, uh, Titian. Now, if you see an A-N connected to this digraph, it means a person, okay? Titian, this is a painter. And most of the time, an open I like this at the beginning of a word will always say I, but it doesn't in this word, okay? Now, look at this one. This says shh because that is a vowel. So this is militia. That T-I followed by a consonant, so it's not a digraph, so baptism. You have a T-I followed by a vowel, but this one right here is not a digraph. This is ostia, okay, ostia. Now this is following the rule that if you have an I followed by a vowel, you pronounce that with an E, okay? So sometimes if, if, you, if you see that that's a vowel, just play with the word, okay? Now, rem so we have right here, tick, pragmatic. Now that's a consonant. So we have, if you have it in a multi-syllable word, how do you spell tick? T-I-C. But how would you spell tick in a one-syllable word? Okay, T-I-C-K. 
Same thing with biotic. If it's in a multi-syllable word, how do you spell ick? I-C. How do you spell ick if it's in a one-syllable word? I-C-K. Now, we have anti. I doubled it up because I think it's important that you know how to spell your aunt's name if you're taking notes, which my son over here, Paul, is taking notes. And so I want him to spell anti twice because I think that's important to know how to spell, to spell that because it's spelled different. Okay, now remember, it's not a digraph because this is a suffix. Now, inception, T-I-O-N, you know it's a digraph connected to your Latin root. So let's see how we had reception up here. Uh, now, we're going to move into the SIs and they follow the same rules, pretty much. They are a little bit different. This says sh and zh, depending on if a vowel is in front of it. So if you have a vowel sitting right here in front, it'll make this, it'll force this to say zh. And it does that with S's, okay? So look, we have an SI followed by a consonant, so we, this will not be a digraph. So this is subsidy, op, sin, look, consonant, Toxin, consonant, so it's not a digraph. It's at the beginning of the word, we know it's not a digraph. And not only that, it has a consonant here, simmer. Now look at this one. This is at the end of a word, or kind of in the middle. This says zh because of that vowel. And if you see S-I-O-N, you know it's digraph, okay? Erosion, so E is a chameleon prefix, you have rows and this is connected to your Latin. Okay, so we have an SI here, followed by a consonant, so we know that that is not a digraph. So this says sincere, but look at this one. This is stuck to your S-I-O-N, your unit sound. So, but this has a vowel right here, and look, the SI is followed by a vowel. So you have this, is going to say zh because of this vowel. So this says illusion, okay? So look at this word. This is followed by a vowel, but in this word, this is following the word, the rule. If you have an I followed by a vowel, it says e, okay? So this says messianic. And so same rule right here. How would you spell ick at the, or nick, how would you spell that nick at the end of the multi-syllable word? N-I-C, but how would you spell it if it was the one syllable word? N-I-C-K, okay? Now we have omission. Now remember, mit, this is a Latin root. This S-I-O-N is connected to Latin root. An M-I-T, we had that in our last lesson. So we have synthesis. This SI is followed by a consonant, so you know that's not a digraph. This is at the beginning and followed by a consonant, so this is not a digraph. So this says signs. So same here, this is followed by a consonant, and so it's not a digraph. So this says arsis. But look, this one has a, it has a vowel in front of it and behind it. So this will say zh because of this vowel, okay? Fantasia, all right? Now this looks, this S-I, this is a base word. Boss, bossy, bossily. Change the Y to I and add on your suffix. So we have, um, this is not a consonant, so you know that that is not a digraph. Same thing here. This is the base word, case. Drop the E and add your vowel suffix, casings. Now I put synthesis in here twice because I was just wondering if you noticed all the different parts in here that show that this is Greek. That shows it's Greek, this Y, the PH, and the Y shows this is Greek. Right off the bat you can see that, okay? So study your Greek combining forms. This says, uh, and, well, first off, let's look at this. A right before the SI and A after it. So this says aphasia, okay? 
SI followed by a vowel, but look, this is prosy. This is a suffix. Change the Y to I, so this is not. So look for a base word. This right here is not a digraph. Now this is unusual, so we the beginning, so we know it's not a digraph, but this is one of those unusual words that have the C at the end of a one syllable word. So that's why I put that in there so you could see that. So we have a vowel right before your SI and a vowel after it. So this is says hyperplasia. See how this says zh because that vowel's here? And then it also says this is um, a digraph because of this vowel. But not always does that happen, so just kind of play with your words. So same with this one, astasia, vowel here, so this says zh, and we have a vowel here, so we, that's a digraph. But this one right here, is, this is dionysiac. So this is, this is not a digraph, even though it's followed by a vowel right here. So this is saying if, this, if you have a vowel, it's pronounced this as an E. This says sile, fus fusily. This is not one because this is a consonant. Uh, we have an SI, that's at the beginning, so we know it's not one, but then we also have a consonant. And IGH says I sight. But look at this, it's at the beginning, so it's not a digraph, followed by a consonant, not a digraph. So you have two things that show you that this is not a digraph. So this says a sigla. sigla. I thought this was an interesting word. So this says quasha. And see how this says shh, because that is not a vowel. But look at this one, this says a zh. See how this turned to zh, because that is a vowel. Anyways, these are digraphs because there's a vowel here. Now we're gonna go into the CIs, that is a digraph and it follows the same rule as the TI and the SI, but it has a, diff a, a little bit of a different meaning. So this says, see right here you have a CI, but it's followed by a consonant, so you know that that is not a digraph. So this word says facile. Citron or citron, civets. See how they're at the beginning, so they are not, and they have consonants over here. Now this A, A E, is a vowel team, but it says E in here, which is unusual. So this says E C M. So this right here is not a digraph, even though that's a vowel. Ossine. See, this has a uh, I and E at the end. Follow, that has a consonant. Cities. You have a C I. It's at the beginning. And then you also have a T-I, but you had a base word here that was city. Change the Y to I and add your suffix ES. So you know that that is not one, even though it looks like you might have two digraphs in there. But look, that's, that's a not, that's a consonant, it's not a vowel, so you know that there's no way. Not only that, it's the beginning of the word. Same with citify. But look at this one. This says facial. Now this one, is a digraph. And these ones, the CI always says shh. And look, it's followed by a vowel. But also, the, T, the CIs often work with your employment or like that. So this, the CI AN, AN means a person. And we have, so often that will be added on with the CI. So like, Tactician, so somebody who works in tactics. So if you could spell tactic, you can spell tactician by adding an I-A-N at the end. So it needs to be an A-N because it says I am a person, all right? So clinician, so somebody who works in a clinic. Politician, somebody that works in politics. Obst obstetrician, so somebody that works obstetrix obstetrics. So now we have a physician, so somebody that works with the physical body. 
And so if you could spell like physics, you could spell physician. This is a Greek word. Mortician, mort means death. Um, musician, somebody who works in music, see how it's an A-N. But it won't always, C-I is not always just associated with the A-M. So we have social. See how this is followed by a vowel. And that is a digraph. And this says uh, fasc uh, fascia. And I, I look at this one, fascia. See how so close that is? This is a closed syllable and this is an open syllable. So this is fascia and this is fascia. Uh, this says, this is at the beginning so you know and it's followed by a consonant so you know that there is no way that this is a digraph. So this is or sicula. But this word says bocha, which is really unusual for a CI. So this is actually a game. This is at the beginning of a word, so this says cipher. It's a Greek word. Now, okay, so this word is not going to be a digraph, even though it looks like it because it's followed by a vowel, but this is following the rule, and this says E. This says um, uncia, uncia. Uh, we have, and then we have racism. See how that one is a consonant, so we're not following the, uh, we're, that is not a digraph in this one. So anyways, I hope this was super helpful for you in understanding your digraphs and helping you along the way with your reading and your spelling. So we'll see you in the next lesson.